One of the biggest reasons why men fail with their finances, why I failed early in my life with my finances, because I chose the wrong woman. 86% of millionaires are married. Yeah. When God said it is not good for man to be alone, yeah. it was right after he gave him the mandate yeah. to go forth in the earth and to produce, to take over, to reign. God was not giving Adam a helpmate just for companionship. Yeah. He was giving Adam a helpmate so he could help him build. Because we're married and because we're in business together and we see each other literally every day, mm -hmm. I think we have about 20 years of arguments already under our belt. <laughs> so there's growth. Huge. Hyperspeed. Well, if you do this right in terms of your money and how you make your money and the woman and partner that you choose to have in your life, watch what happens to you. I'm also... Uh, want to touch on this in terms of his views on women and men making money. And uh, for the three girls that uh, helped him out, well, listen, congratulations, you, you, you had your moment in time. But I'm also thinking about the morality and the values and principles of women today making money. I'm thinking about my wife, I'm thinking about my, my two daughters, um, thinking about the cousins I have in my family that I love, that I want to make sure I protect, because I want to make sure that they make their money in the most upstanding way possible. So therefore, they don't have to look over their shoulders and they can feel good about themselves, not just for the short term, but for the long term. Because when I was looking for a wife, when I was looking for a partner to do life with, to raise a family with, is a guy that was a single father with three kids already. How do I not repeat the process? Because this was costing me a lot of money, it was costing me a lot of emotional and mental health, and it was caused to me to be in a situation where I was starting to lose hope. So when I got dialed in to what a woman is in my life, now you can take this for whatever you want. I could be wrong about this in, in your life, but in my life it's worked out. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10, follow me on this, and here's how it goes. A wife of noble character who can find, she is worth far more than rubies. So in other words, if you have a woman, not just of external beauty, but of noble character, she's worth more than money. She's worth more than precious stones, extremely valuable in your life. Next verse, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. In other words, she is a woman of value and a husband has confidence that she's not gonna be skipping out on him. When she goes out with her girlfriends, he's not worried about her, flirting with members of the opposite sex while he's not around. He's got full confidence in her. Next verse, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. So the woman that he's talking about that's not eager, that's not wanting to take on the world. Listen, a wife of noble character, if you find her, she wants to work. She's eager to get to work. Next verse, she is like merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still at night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Doesn't sound like a lazy woman to me. Next verse. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard, which means to me that she's also a student. She's also learning about things. She's got her own cash. I remember when she and I first started dating, I said, babe, we got a, we got a trip to Vegas. She didn't know it was an annual convention for our company because we were still dating. I tell her about the, the company stuff. I said, babe, we're going to Vegas. Can you meet me there? She goes, yeah, let's go. And next thing you know, without waiting for me to buy her a ticket, she goes, babe, I got my ticket booked. I got these days, these days, boom, I'm, I'm solid. I'm good to go. Really? She didn't wait for me to spend my money to make sure she goes to Vegas. She took the initiative. She didn't wait for me. She's investing her money into this relationship. I had so much profound respect for my wife when she did that. Next verse. She gets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In other words, this woman is working night, day, round the clock. She's excited about making a contribution to the household. In her hand, she holds the staff and grasps the spindle with her finger, fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. This woman of noble character is generous. She cares for other people, not just herself. Next verse. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She's clothed in fine linen and purple. You know, she's wearing the latest fashion styles. She's a woman that feels good. She's looking good. She's feeling good. And when it happens, she does good. And obviously, it pays good. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. In other words, a wife of noble character has a husband of noble character. He's respected and admired amongst his peers and leaders of the city and the community.
Next verse. She makes linen and garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. See, if there's something that she's selling, it's the handiwork of her hands, not her body. Next verse. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. And wisdom is nothing more than knowledge times experience. That's wisdom. And it's done over time. And by the way, you can have a lot of wisdom in a short period of time based on as much knowledge you're willing to acquire and experience as well you're willing to endure. Next verse. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Again, referencing that wife of noble character is not lazy. She's looking out for her husband. She's looking out for her children. She's looking out for her household. Next verse. Her husband arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, her husband also praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Husband's edifying and giving words of affirmation to his wife. Next one, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. Interesting, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. I hope this serves for you as a reference. If you don't know what a woman is in your life, a woman should do in your life. I thought I was going to be talking about money here, but one of the biggest reasons why men fail with their finances, why I failed early in my life with my finances, because I chose the wrong woman. I chose the wrong woman to have a relationship with. I chose the wrong woman to, to decide to marry. Why? Because I didn't have a biblical reference. I didn't have a reference. I thought it just felt good. We'll do this. We'll figure it out. We'll wing it. Well, if you do this right, in terms of your money and how you make your money, and the woman and partner that you choose to have in your life, watch what happens to you. And I'm looking back and reflecting on my life when I decided to marry my now wife and commit 100% of my emotions, my energy, my resources, all into Sheena, all into our family, all into what we're doing together. It exploded my business. It exploded my happiness and enjoyment. That doesn't mean though we didn't have arguments. Of course we had arguments, but the D word was never in our vocabulary. We decided working this together. We decided that God was going to be the one that we would weave our life in and around. And life has been blessed because of it, and more so the people that we're in business with, our clients, they've been blessed as a result of it too as well. So I think you expect that from a reaction video here on Andrew Tate about biblical references. But hey, that's the way I'm wired. That's the way I see the world these days. Not to say that I'm perfect, but I'm looking to be perfected as I build my relationship closer with God and deepening my faith as it relates to some of the deepest subjects in our world today, which is money, relationships, in our faith. Uh, so when we're, when we're looking at, you know, uh, um, I want to talk about, uh, before I go back to a money conversation, I want to talk back to you, Natasha. You know, you guys, your, your business, you're, you're creating this transformational content. What are some of the key indicators would you guide somebody into choosing the right spouse? Out for, uh, from a man's perspective. Because the majority of my channel is men. Okay. It's like, it's like it. what, 55% men? 55, 45. 45% nice. women. Nice. So let's do it. We'll, we'll do both. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to do this. Let's be gentlemanly. Let's start with ladies. Okay. Um, it applies to both. It can, oh, okay. It, it really so it's universal apply. truth. Yeah. Okay. Universal. Cool. So, universal. so how would somebody go about choosing yeah. the right spouse? So this is a great question. Um, where I start with the conversation that's very different. She got to look good. I don't start no, with, no, I, don't, no. <laughs> I don't start okay, with okay, your okay. spouse. Okay. 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 I believe the foundational skill set, because I believe choosing the right spouse is a skill. The foundational skill set that you develop to choose the right spouse starts with choosing the right friends. Interesting that you say that. Because the Bible says, right, that a friend sits closer than a brother, right? So we get that there's this concept where there's a value system for friendship. And if we go into marriage, we will see, most people think, and you yeah. know this is a married mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. that majority of your marriage is kissing and bumping and Netflix and chilling, right? <laughs> it's like, yo, I got a woman that's going to be able to lay down all the time for me, right? Come on, I, I want to be honest with you. Yeah. Sex is, what, maybe 30, 40%? Yeah. Uh, maybe at maximum. Yeah. How, what percent would you give sex? Sex? Probably 10. Exactly. <laughs> you saw the look on my face. I was, gonna, I was being generous. <laughs> very, very, I knew you were going to be generous. honest. Maybe it's even single ten. digits. Not to say that's not important. And But guess what? That 10% yeah. is amazing. Of course. It's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, unbelievable. But what's the 90? Oh, it, it's uh, processing issues and, and doing life together and running a business together, raising our family together. and majority of the things that it takes to have a successful marriage, mm -hmm. you have to learn. You can learn how to do in a successful friendship. So I say like this. If you can't be a successful friend, you're not going to be a successful spouse. So the first place that I encourage people 
is to evaluate their friendships and see which of your friends have you been able to endure the longest, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, what kind of friend are you? Okay. That's the first place I, I challenge, because then it really gets them up, because what happens when you start going into spouse stuff, mm -hmm. future spouse, they start going into dreaming, yeah. ima imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But starting with a friendship, it makes it real, because they have friends, yeah. or they may not have friends. Yeah. And they're like, dang, I ain't got no friends. <laughs> and I'm like, you mean to tell me, you think you're gonna be able to keep a woman that you've got to take care of? I mean, I'm talking about sharing bank accounts, I'm talking yeah. about sharing beds, I'm talking about sharing all kinds of stuff. And you got a friend, you ain't got nobody that you can just like yeah. ride out with, yeah. go on a vacation, kick it with, and say, peace out, homie, deuce, we're going go yeah. out separate houses. Like a friend that don't require you to pay for nothing, mm -hmm. a friend that doesn't require you to have to apologize every single time you make them mad, and you haven't learned how to have an enduring friendship. Yeah. So that's where we start. That's start, step number one is evaluating your friendships. Wow. That's the first step in choosing the right spouse. Now we move into number two, which is now your ability to choose yourself. This is... What do I value about me? Yeah. What? But can I make a comment on number one? Yeah, please. Um, when I got married, when I was thinking about getting married to my now wife, it's the first thing I was double checking because in my mind, with all the pain I went through, I've always wondered if we get into an argument, who are you calling? <laughs> like, who are you calling? Yeah, uh, is, is, it. It, is it an ex-boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, you know, she had, she had a kid already. Yeah. Is she calling her uh, baby daddy? Yeah. Is she, you know, is she calling another dude? Is she hanging out at the bar? You know? Uh, having a rebound type of drink, yep. I, I don't know. And then more so, if she does talk to a friend, do they defend her, do they defend me, or do they defend us, that relationship? Bro, well, because your friendships, yeah. you know you know the quote, yeah. you, you are the sum total of your friendships, right? Yeah. Like in regards to you are the average of whatever, yeah. that quote, whatever that quote is. And it's really true. Your friendships, your friends really do determine your path. And I'm in the same way. When I met my wife, I wanted to get, I wanted to go out with you and your friends. I yeah. wanted to see how were you with your Actually, friends. You, you met her online, so you got to double, 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 double. Double, double, <laughs> right? So between her family and her friends, I was very interested to see her dynamic and yeah. who she was. Yeah. Because these are the people between your family, how do you treat them? Because these are the people that you didn't choose. Yeah. You were just stuck with them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she's a Cali girl though, right? Yeah, Cali my, girl. My wife's a Cali girl. Nice. She's Sacramento. Where's your, where's your wife uh, from? from? From Temecula, San Diego area. Uh, I got you, yep. so in the south. Mm -hmm. So was there a different values and principles that you had differently been being raised? Kind of like I asked you when oh, you were in high absolutely. school? absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so she valued rest and chill. And <laughs> my, my wife and you want to get along. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just like, hey, let's enjoy the day. And me and you and are I'm out like, there. enjoy, yeah, enjoy yeah. what we got to do. We got work to do. You know, so yeah, we definitely have some different value systems, you know, but we balance each other out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so, um, but when it came down to choosing, you know, once I, you know, evaluate your ability to choose friends, then you're choosing yourself, which is your purpose, which is your destiny. Yeah. Now we can move into choosing your spouse. And yes, attraction definitely is a big part of that. That's, I, that's number two though. Yeah, no, number, number, number three. That's number it's three. Well, it's the, the skill set is choosing yeah. friends, yeah. choosing you, now choosing a person. To go back to you, what, what do you mean going to you? So, I'm skip. yeah, I, I'll kind of breeze yeah. that one through, yeah. but choosing you is taking the time to truly understand your strengths, your weaknesses, because what it is is that I say, when you are marrying somebody, you're not saying to them, hey, I do yeah. to you yeah. for the rest of my life, and it's only future-based. No, no, you're saying I do to their past, to their junk, to their mess, to their unhealed stuff. All You're saying I do to all of them. Yeah. And if you aren't aware, <laughs> it's real. And when, yeah. if you're not aware of yeah. what a person is saying I do to, so you can help them yeah. versus you just being like, I didn't know that was there. Yeah, or, 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 or I hope for the best. <laughs> I hope for the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah. Versus you taking the time to say, hey, I've, I can't, I'm not perfect, but here are the things I have gone through. That's mess. Yeah. But then now here are the things that have become messages in my life. Here's what I know I've been called to do. Here's what I've been graced to do. I'm not saying you need to know everything, but you need to have an inkling about who you are and why you are. And you should, I say it like this, you should have spent the season dating you before you spent the season trying to date other people. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And that's the you conversation. For, so transparency, when, when I got divorced and I became a single parent yeah. of three kids, um, you know, obviously the you know, YouTube subscribers may or may not know this, but uh, from a period of 30 years old, I just want to give my life to the Lord. I said, okay, God, I tried it my way. Let me try it your way now. And I spent my entire 30s or paying the mistakes in my 20s, right? And, but once I started following his way, yeah. he not only helped me recoup what I lost, but accelerated me 20, 30 times. Yes, sir. 
because I started surrendering to that, uh, to that, uh, to that, uh, to the spirit. And when we're when we're looking at, you know, uh, how I used to look and how most men look at the relationship, the reason why I joked about it in the beginning, she got to look good because that's it. And then you realize six months later, she got just as much bad breath as you do. Yes, sir. <laughs> Right? She's got bad habits as much as you do. Yes, sir. She does the toilet paper upside down than you do the toilet paper. And the toothbrush is all over the place and she's either uh, very clean and you're an un, un, you know, you're not clean and she, you know, or you're very unclean and she's very clean. It's yeah. Either way, in terms of the house and being tidy around the house. What I call it is you're looking for someone who's holistically attractive. Not just externally, but internally. Holistic yeah. attraction. And that the internal will last. Yes. That will last longer. And now, granted, yeah. you... God wants you to be happy. Mm -hmm. God wants you to enjoy sure. the wife of your youth. Sure. Come on. So you definitely need to be able to get a little arousal when you see your wife come out of the bathroom <laughs> naked. You know, I'm not, I don't want you looking at me like, Boop. you know what I'm saying? You be like, not great. <laughs> you know, if, as, if you're yeah. dropping and, and yeah. dropping and gaining weight, and yeah. she's, you can't come at her if, yeah, you, right, if right. you're gaining and she's gaining. Y'all yeah. both doing it together. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Continue to respect her body as you ain't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I do think you got to have an equal standard, right? But at the end of the day, um, attraction is huge, but I do believe if your heart is in alignment with God, attraction will be more than just physical. Yeah. When you you will be initially attracted by the physical, which will cause you yeah. to be motivated to have a conversation, yeah. cause you to be motivated. But once you get to talk to her, yeah. you should become even more attracted. Yeah. You should not go from a place of, dang, she's fine, yeah. oh, she's beautiful, to meeting her and being like, I'm glad she's fine, <laughs> glad she's beautiful. <laughs> Woo! Now I should be like, oh my gosh, she's fine and she's yeah. got brain. Yeah. Man, she challenged yeah. She's And that's where you will have a lasting relationship. Yeah. So one thing I posted the other day on social media was I didn't marry just for love. I married for money. Because I believe that when God says it's not good for man to be alone, you would think that I, it's not like, <laughs> yeah, you, you weren't ready for that. Hear me when I, 86% of millionaires are married. Sure. Yeah. When God said it is not good for man to be alone, yeah. it was right after he gave him the mandate yeah. to go forth in the earth and to produce, to take over, to reign. And it was soon after that moment, God said it's not good for man to be alone, which meant that God was not giving Adam a helpmate just for companionship. Yeah. He was giving Adam a helpmate so he could help him build. You need a woman who can help you build. Yeah who can help you take the vision that God has given you mm -hmm. and take it to the next level. Yep. So when I say I didn't just marry for love, I married yep. for money because I was marrying someone who was going to help me yeah. make money, sure. who was going to help me produce, who would help me steward in the seasons of abundance, help yep. me sacrifice in the seasons of, of hardship, <laughs> who will help me pray when we don't know what to do, <laughs> who will help me go out and see opportunities. When, like, I need a woman yeah. who's my partner. I don't need, a, I don't need yeah. just a love partner. I need a purpose partner. That's what you're looking for. So the moment you are initially attracted as a man, yeah. the next thing you've got to check mark is, is there purpose here? Go into the Bible. When God said that whole term of, I want to help create a helpmate who is suitable for you. Yeah. This is something we teach in our program. That word suitable has been replaced with compatible. And if you look at the Webster dictionary definition of compatibility versus suitability, it's drastically two different definitions. Compatibility is the ability to be with one person without any conflict or problems. Wow. Yeah, because you're com compact. You're, you're compact in there. What was large, not compact. You're, I get it. I'll ask you this question. Yeah. Is there any relationship that has any problems or conflict? Of course, all the time, especially when you're compact. Exactly. <laughs> so compatibility is yeah. not the basis of the relationship. Yeah. Compatibility are the things that cause relationship to overflow. Yeah. It's the things that cause you to be like, dang, yeah. man, we really just get along. We yeah. laugh at the same yeah. things. We enjoy the same music. But those should not be the foundational decision makers for that marriage. It's the things that just make the relationship gravy, mm -hmm. icing on the cake. Ooh, man, we got, and, that, and not everything will be yeah. the things that cause you to be compatible. But then if you go into what God said in the Bible, I'm going to create a helpmate who is suitable, suitable. for you. Suitable, if you look at the definition, the dictionary definition of suitability is right or fit for purpose. Right or fit for purpose. Make sure we put the <laughs> graphic right here. <laughs> right or fit for purpose. Okay. So suitability should be the initial thing you're checking the box on, which is, is this person fit for purpose? Yeah. Can we build together? Yeah. Are we going in the same direction? Are we equally yoked? Do what we call have non-negotiable 
qualities about one another that are like, yo, these, yeah. she loved Jesus. Yeah. Hey, this woman has the ability to be frugal. She's not out here just being frivolous and spending all, because I can't, yeah. did, what are the non-negotiable? And then you move into the compatible things. Mm -hmm. And we both like going to the movies. Yeah. We both love hiking. Yeah. Like these are the things that make the relationship fun and enjoyable. So suitable first. Suitable first. I think it's appropriate that we put this right smack dab in the middle of the show. When I think about family, your family, man, you share, you have five children. Mm -hmm. The first question I have is you're in business with your wife. Yes. For a lot of people, that could be difficult being in business with their wife. My wife and I, we're both entrepreneurs, but we're not necessarily in business together. Now there are elements of business that we do together, but the main core businesses that we run, you know, we run those apart. And then the cool thing is we consult, right? Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. I get her expertise. She gets my expertise. Cool. I, mean, I won't hire a consultant or hire someone without her interviewing them. Yeah, because you guys are yeah. getting a lot of knowledge in your, own, in your own verticals. Oh, yeah. And then you guys can bring that back together. But you all work together. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you and Sheena have done to make that work? Because here's the other reality. Marriage is marriage. Sure. Human being, male and female. <laughs> yeah. yeah. X and so chromosome. there are days that you're madly in love. And then there's other days that, you know, you're like, there she goes. Step uh, off, step off. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. So just share a little bit with us about that dynamic. Uh, you know, I think conflict and arguments are healthy. You know? I, How I, about I, that? Yeah, I think they are. I mean, if things were just, you know, in other words, we're both voicing our mm -hmm. opinion and we happen to be both, you know, eight type personality. She's a lot more organized and structured than I am. And on mine, I'm a lot more creative uh, on my end. So mm -hmm. through the process of building a business together, we are able to find our individual strengths. Mm. And then we also have a mentor ah. that pulls us up to as well. So just like I have a accountability partner right. in the gym, we got an accountability partner in business. So that kind of helps level things out at oh, times? Oh, big time. And sometimes we ask questions to our mentor because, you know, sometimes we may not listen to each other, but we'll listen to our mentor. Ah. <laughs> So then there's an objective third. What I'm hearing is there's an objective third party that both of you all respect. Yes. That when you're doing business and there's some type of business agreement, you can take that somewhere else. And then at that point, it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you're not like, yeah, see, I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and sometimes, you know, and, and I've, I've learned. For example, we got into arguing yesterday. Okay. I, I, she, she says, babe, you, you kind of snapped, snapped, snapped at me. I, I, I didn't snap at you. No, 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 you snapped at me. Okay, forget how I'm feeling. You felt like I snapped at you? She mm -hmm. says, yeah, well, babe, I don't think I did, but listen, if you thought I snapped at you, I apologize, I'm sorry. F four or five years ago, that wasn't, man, I had to prove myself right. Uh -huh. I'm the man. Right, yeah, I'm, right, I'm right, not, right, right. I'm not wrong, I'm right. Okay. Versus, you know what, if I'm serving my queen, if she felt, regardless if I felt a certain way, if she felt it, mm -hmm. then that's important. Got it. Regardless of how I feel. That's, and, and let me tell you, that's probably the toughest thing <laughs> in marriage. Fuck. I love that because what I heard is that you were actually acknowledging the feeling and then apologizing for the impact mm -hmm. that your actions had on her that created right. the feeling. Right, because we naturally want to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a natural thing for us physically, emotionally, mentally, mm -hmm. things that like there's, there's things that she's probably grown up with. I'll probably never know about, which makes mm -hmm. her the person that she is today. Yeah. And I have to honor and respect that and vice versa. And there's certain things that I that I need mm -hmm. as a man. To, to feel loved and respected, that uh, I need to remind her, hey, hey, babe, listen, in this situation, would you consider doing this? Makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious about how your marriage has and how it's evolved with the business. Um, and the reason I'm asking this question is because I know for Pam and I, yeah. the first two years were tough. So I'm, I'm curious, like, how have you all evolved and what advice would you give to young couples who are looking to build I mean, they're listening, yeah. they're watching, and they're looking to build their business together. Or maybe they're, they have two separate businesses and they're looking to build. Yeah. What are some of the things that you and Sheena do? Like the, let's call it the ingredients or maybe the components that you all use to stabilize your relationship. If this is the person that you're going to date, mm -hmm. for me, my situation was I'm a single dad. Mm -hmm. I had three kids. Sheena was a single mom. She had one kid. So we're a blended family. Blended. Okay. And so for 12 years, I, I dated my business. I wasn't dating anybody. So I lived for 12 years, didn't really date, mm -hmm. right? So I was just dating the business. I was involved in the business. I was loving on the business, right? And then now we get married. Now I got to love on my wife. Uh. I got to feel like I got to remove my priorities and put it there. And you talk about evolution. Because we're married and because we're in business together and we see each other literally every day, mm -hmm. I think we have 
about 20 years of arguments already under a belt. <laughs> so there's growth. Huge. Hyperspeed. Yeah. Hyperspeed. I mean, I, I think people yeah. forget that, I, don't, I mean, everybody married that's listening, when you say argue, they're like, yeah. And I, I think sometimes there are people who are single yeah. who are out here that follow you and Sheena, and they see, they see the, the bright lights and the stars, and you guys are smiling and hugging, and it's like, yeah, babe. They're like, they argue? Oh, yeah. yeah this is like, real. Like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So you argue, and, you're, and what I love about that is you're like, it's grown your relationship hyperspeed. And so it's almost like you've been together 20 years because you've been able to cover so much ground. Right. Because you're confronting one another. Yeah. Would you say that confronting one another is one of the elements that has solidified and strengthened your relationship? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, um, managing conflict mm. and processing issues quickly. Because if you don't process issues and manage a conflict quickly, you'll, it'll ruin your day. And if you're in business, it'll, it'll throw off your sales calls. It'll throw off your presentations. It'll throw off your boardroom conversations. You'll loathe the business. Because mm. you loathe her, right? And you're in business together. And you're business together. Yeah, and, right. And, and people, and then your team, because you're both leaders in the business, right? Then your team can feel the energy, right? Uh huh. Matt walks into the room. Sheena doesn't look at him. They're like, oh, okay. yeah, something going on. <laughs> <laughs> and the immature entrepreneur will try to share their problems with their staff, with mm. the team, and try mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. recruit them in their corner, right? To Pit them against the other right. partner. Right. Right. That, that, and that, make no, that makes no sense. Now you create drama in the office. People are like, I already got my own drama. I don't need your drama. Now I got to deal with your yeah, drama. Yeah, forget this. Right. It's, that's not fair to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Our game is if, if I'm serving you, mm -hmm. right, if, I, if I'm your employer or if I'm coaching and mentoring you, then I need to bring you up to the next level. I don't need to make my job harder mm -hmm. by sprinkling my own crap in your lawn. I love that. So one of the structures is communication. Yeah. Let's just take that, right? So hardcore communication, mm -hmm. whether it's loving, whether it's confrontational with love. And you don't need to be right all the time, right? Say so that again. You don't need to be right all the time. <laughs> because, I, th yeah. I mean, yeah. as a coach... One of the things I work with on my clients and one of the things we've talked about on the show is the cognitive distortions that many of us have. Good word. I mean, cognitive distortions, mental illusions. Yeah, right. Right. I mean, we, we look at the world through this lens that's not really real. Yeah. And one of those one of those lenses is if I'm not right, I'm losing. And that's an illusion that will wreck your life. Mm -hmm. It will wreck your relationship and it will wreck your business. Mm -hmm. And what I hear you saying is, look, man, I'm willing to take that lens off and actually look. Yeah. objectively at what's going on. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And that's usually anger and sourced with pride and ego. And sometimes pride gets in our way. I mean, you want to take pride in your work. You mm -hmm. want to be prideful about who you are, what your brand you represent, the last name that you have. But when, when pride and ego comes to be negative and toxic and, and it just becomes selfish, mm -hmm. then that's when you know, you know it's, it's not pulling you in the right direction. Got it. So based on communication, what does you all like? you all have a cadence for meeting? For me, I, I have a couple of rules uh, when I sit down with 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 folks. So the only reason I'm going to ever pick up the phone is if I see my wife call back twice. So you actually tell them? Yeah, up front. I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. And my, more my kids are calling me and they call back twice. Mm -hmm. And then my mentor. So if any of those calls come up and it'd be a quick glance because I don't want to take attention off the client because I don't want them snapping the end because there's always energy. When but it's beautiful because you've already set the tone. Yeah. So they know if you pick up the phone, Matt's handling an emergency with his family, with the most important people in his mm -hmm. life. you got to manage the expectations up front. As I got to know my wife, I needed to share with her some of the things in my past that probably I wasn't happy with because that's me, mm -hmm. right? And so, hey, babe, this is a couple of things that you need to know about me. Da, 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 da. I don't want, because of the social media world that it is today, I don't want somebody putting a post up from 20 years ago mm -hmm. that before social media was even created, somebody scanned an old picture from from the whatever, and, and, and she may not like Right. The visual. The visual. Right. And yeah. so I, 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 this is my life. Please don't judge me. Please judge me from the day I met you and how I treated you because you changed my life. That's huge. Right. So so just know this. So managing expectations up front with not only your, your life partner, your, your children, but also your business. The best way to, to go process conflict is to let people know the stuff up front and asking the tough questions, letting people know the tough questions up front. How do you feel about marriage? How do you feel about kids? How do you feel about the D word? Mm. I've, like I've never mentioned the D word. You know what I'm talking about in terms of marriage. Oh, I don't, yeah, even, I don't I do. even mention right now I'm on the radio because yeah. I don't think that word has any place in my life. It doesn't. I, want, I don't want to give it one ounce of life. Yeah. The D word. I love that because what I'm hearing is commitment. Yeah. Like I'm in one of the things I hear is that with your wife, the most important person in your life, you've managed the expectation. Like no matter what happens, mm -hmm. I'm here. Right. We, right. we together. Right. 
Right. That's funny. You're talking about commitment to our physical mm -hmm. and our health. Yep. And how we also have a commitment to our family. Kind of similar, huh? It's, 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 yeah, yeah. And that's interesting. Yeah. You, you share. Yeah, I mean, quality, yeah. I, what I'm catching from this conversation is that you as a leader, you've made some hardcore commitments. Got to be hardcore. And they're commitments that you're not willing to breach. Non-negotiables. Would you say that has a huge deal to do with your success? 100%. These are certain non-negotiables in my life. There's no negotiation. So what would you say to the person that's constantly negotiating? It's like uh, being on a boat without a rudder. Mm. And the, the storm's catching you, you know, sloshing you left and right. And by the way, a lot of life is dealing with the storms. There's a lot more storms in life than there are sunny days. And if you, have, if you don't have your anchors down, mm. you're going to be knocked left and right.